Previously on the Palmetto Trail, I was picked up at my ending location in Landrum by my shuttle driver and brought to the Newberry Police Department where I had left off the year prior. As darkness and rain was settling in, I quickly made my way out of Newberry to the beginning of the Ennery Passage. For the next day and a half, I worked my way through the 37-mile Ennery Passage, crossing rivers and boardwalks and passing by lakes and campgrounds along the way. Day four began with an 11-mile road walk to connect to the Glen Springs Passage, and by midday, I was feeling a bit worn out and stopped for a nice lunch break at the beginning of the passage before moving on to the Croft Passage. At mile 20 for the day, I stopped at Croft State Park to fill up on some water and charge some devices before pushing on another five miles into the Croft Passage. It was here that I stumbled upon the perfect place to pitch my tent and enjoy some dinner while the sun went down over the ridge. Links to part one and my previous two years of section hikes from Allendaw Passage to the Newberry Passage can all be found in the description box below. Thanks for coming along and joining me for day five and six and the conclusion of this 130 mile section hike on the beautiful Palmetto Trail. so good. If you like miso soup, make sure you try this brand if you haven't already. I used to be able to get it at Whole Foods, but I just ordered it off Amazon. And it's all natural, wholesome ingredients. There's no MSG or any other garbage in there. A very short ingredient list. It's got little mushrooms, obviously tofu, if you can see that or not, and big chunks of seaweed mm. so good after a long day but what I'm really looking forward to trying is what I have for dinner tonight another new item stowaway gourmet that was what the beer bison chili was I had two nights ago from that company stowaway gourmet but this one is lamb bourguignon stew of lamb and vegetables in a classic red wine reduction eating fine on the trail. The one thing I hate already about Stowaway Gourmet is their package. It's so tall and narrow, it's hard to eat. Obviously you need a long, a long spoon, but I would prefer the Pinnacle Foods bags like I had for breakfast. I think I had one yesterday and this morning. They're only about half this height. And they're actually shaped, you know, like this instead of like this. Much better. Oh yeah, we got a good boil. Oh man. <clears throat> Let's see if I can show you this. Look at that. Massive chunks of vegetables and lamb. Boy, oh boy, can't wait to try this one. Well, I gotta say, the uh, lamb bourguignon lived up to my expectations. Mm-hmm. There's just some big chunks of mutton. Mm-hmm. Some of them are a little bit on the chewy side, but man, flavor is phenomenal. See, it's so hard to eat all these dumb-shaped bag. Well, the sun has set here at the end of day four, and it looks like it's gonna be a gorgeous night. The low tonight is like 44, a big change. It's been pretty darn cold the last two nights, so I'm looking forward to sleeping a little more comfortably tonight, and not getting so cold. The lamb bourguignon, is that what it's called? That was really good. My belly's full, 
and I think I'm ready to turn in for the night. I've been fighting a mild headache on and off all day. I think it's because I've been trying to limit the amount of water I carry because it makes your pack really heavy. And when you're moving fast and long distances, you know, you obviously want to have the lightest pack you can. So I probably didn't drink as much water as I should have, so I think I'm just mildly dehydrated. But other than that, I feel pretty good. Um, I'm definitely a little sore and ready for a good night's sleep, but I know laying in there for eight or nine hours, um, I'm going to heal up and feel ready to go tomorrow morning. At least I hope. All righty, guys. Well, thanks for uh, hanging out and tuning in. And we'll see you bright and early in the morning. Good night. Here we go, morning of day five. Wow, I got about a 22 mile day. Finishing off the Croft Passage, then on to Cedar Springs Passage, and hopefully all the way to the end of the Hub City Connector Passage. And that should end up being about a 22 mile day. So actually a bit easier than my previous three days of 25 26 miles so I'm looking forward to it um, I even got out just a touch later than normal it's about 720 so that was nice to sit around camp and enjoy some coffee and not have to rush out almost at first light like I have been doing all right it's a mild morning about mid 40s it feels great let's get rolling just one more mile down trail here at the TV tower, there are numerous picnic tables. Two over there, one right here, and uh, looks like a little platform to help you get on your horse. Oh, there goes some deer. Shoot, I missed them. Welcome to Lake Johnson, a beautiful, Tranquil looking lake. Dead calm today. Very nice. One final look at Lake Johnson before we head back into the woods. Man, it's gorgeous. Here at a junction at mile 8.5. Great place to take a break. It's like, I've got a trail that way, that way, and that way. And there's where I came from. Back there where I filtered water was Kelsey Creek. And I think that was the clearest, freshest looking water that I've seen since I've been on the trail over the last five days. This might just be the prettiest section of Croft State Park yet, around mile 9.5. I haven't seen too many pine trees and pine duff. A lot of hardwoods and fallen leaves. Check out this old bridge, that's pretty cool. I'd love to know the history of that bridge. Here's another look at it. Interesting. Currently on my final mile and a quarter, I think, of the Croft Passage. There's a little trailhead parking area right up there. Now we're on this old abandoned road. Coming down to Cedar Springs Road. Getting close to Cedar Springs Passage.
and I'm beginning to hear the roar of traffic and sirens off in the distance. So I definitely feel like I'm getting closer to the city and that's all right. After being in the woods for most of five days, I'm ready for a little city walking, some coffee, some lunch, some dinner. Yeah, that sounds really good. All right, another passage complete. Croft Passage, check. Onward to the Cedar Springs Passage. Since I didn't have a proper breakfast, I decided to stop here at the beginning of the Cedar Springs Passage and have a little biscuits and gravy, peak refuel. Mm -mm. I think we got a boil. Yep. Into the bag of biscuits and gravy. These biscuits are huge, so you gotta break them up or they'll never rehydrate properly. Here's the finished product. This stuff is amazing. If you don't rehydrate long enough, the sausage chunks can still be a little crunchy. Entering civilization. Fast food. If I would've known there was a McDonald's coming up, I may have saved my peak refuel meal that I just had like a half hour ago. That was a, at least a, $13.95 meal that I could have saved for another trip. Oh well. Man, I could go for another coffee. Starbucks coming soon. I guess I'm going to have to resort to McDonald's coffee. Here we are at the beginning of the Hub City Connector on Country Club Road. Looks like Rail Trail. For some reason, there is not and a Venza map for this rail trail, the Hub City Connector, which is 12 miles. But there is a PDF download on the Palmetto Trail website. So that way you can at least scroll in and see the road names and things like that. You can't see where you're at on the map. That's the only difference. I'm guessing we're gonna have great cellular service the entire time and that's why a downloaded map on a Venza is not required. This is a pretty nice path. Paved right along the tracks. I don't know how many miles are gonna be like this. I'll let you know. It's like a little adventure park. A miniature uh, American Ninja Warrior. How cool. So the trail map gave you two options. Um, one, to stay on that bike path, a little, that rail trail a little longer. And the other option, which is actually the red line considered to be the Palmetto Trail, is called the off-road section. And it takes you a city block off of uh, 56, I think, and then uh, three city blocks back down to Main. So it just weaves you through like a residential neighborhood. It was definitely shorter to stay on the rail trail, but I don't want to skip and leave behind any of what is considered the Palmetto Trail. So that's why I took this route. And, you know, it's enjoyable. It's very peaceful back here and quiet. And you get to see a lot of neat homes and stuff. Correction, when I turned onto Boyd Street, I was leaving behind 176, Highway 176, not 56. And now I'm coming up to Main Street up here where I'll take a little jog to the right. Time for a good meal here at Moe's Original Barbecue. belly is full and we're ready to knock out these final five or six miles to the end of this passage and hopefully I can find a stealth camping spot in the woods near USC Upstate. Currently walking around Wolford College. Very pretty area and a little quieter except for the helicopter. Wolford College Greek Village. Huh, that's interesting. <laughs> Never see anything like that. Practice. I must say, it is very tricky getting around this passage. Going through Walford College, just the whole thing. Since there's not a downloadable Advenza map 
or the hub city connector. You just don't know where you're at all the time. And I'm constantly checking my phone. I must have looked at my maps between my between the download from the Palmetto site and Google Maps. I must have looked at it 50 times since I started. <sighs> well, we're getting near the end. We're past Wolford College. And oh, I don't know. I'm sure we got less than five miles to finish this one up. There are so many twists and turns the way that the Palmetto maps take you through Spartanburg. I just give up. I'm currently on 56, and I know up here about a quarter mile I turn right and start making my way back towards the actual passage, which I think is just a block or two to my right. But the names don't even match up with Google Maps, so at this point in the afternoon, I can't risk getting lost and just spinning my wheels. I gotta make progress towards my ending point tonight. So, and there's nice sidewalks. I'll take these nice sidewalks any day. I don't care how busy it is. But this is 56. I think up here at the next light, I take a right, start working my way towards USC Upstate College, whatever it's called. What's this? I can't believe it. It looks like forest up ahead. Hallelujah. So all down this Millican Road, there's cars parking. And here's another one that just pulled up the park. It says parking. These little signs say parking during daylight hours. People are just sitting in their cars. I don't know what they're doing. I don't understand why they come here to park and just sit in their car and look on their phone. Strange. Let's see, they got these uh, signs here parking during daylight hours. People must like to come here and park beside the Millican Arboretum, which I'm guessing is in there. I haven't seen any signs for it yet. All right, just hit 20 miles and crossing Business 85. And I just have a mile or two to the trailhead at uh, up USC Upstate. And on the way there, there's a pretty densely forested area of trail near a creek called Lawson's Fork. And that is where I'm hoping to set up a stealth camp tonight. We will see. Looking at Google Maps, it looks promising, but you never know until you actually get there and scope it out, right? So, it feels good to be leaving. A lot of that hustle and bustle behind. And definitely walking into a quieter section now. Walking down North Campus Boulevard, somewhere in there, there's a trail. Back there at the intersection. The maps show it going in the woods right there, but I cannot find it. They need to do some serious updating to these maps. It is terrible. I'm telling you, I've had a horrific time all day today trying to figure out my way through the USC Upstate Connection Connector Passage. It is terrible. <sighs> anyway, I know I can get on the trail up here around the turn off to the right somewhere finally leaving North Campus Boulevard behind and back in the woods this looks like it uh, joins up to the trail that I can see on the Palmetto maps now we just need to find a water source and a campsite okay well I finished the uh, USC Upstate Passage and once I finished it, I realized that I never opened up the downloaded Advenza map that I had for that passage. If I would have done that, I would have seen where to get on the trail. I was trying to look at a little beyond the uh, Hub City Connector passage, which showed a little bit. Actually, actually, I think it showed almost all of the upstate uh, passage. Anyway, I'm here at the end. USC Upstate is right up the hill there. You can actually see the lights right up there somewhere. They're playing baseball, hooting and hollering. And here, right here is Lawson's Fork Creek. It's kind of nasty. It smells bad, but it's my only option unless I walk up to campus by the ball game and see if there's water up there somewhere. I'm sure there is, but it's past five o'clock. It's gonna be dark in less than 45 minutes, so I need to get camp set up. 
I have a picnic table, so that's good, but I don't know where to set my tent up. It was terrible up on top of the hill, just uneven, rocky, thorny. I think I'm actually gonna have to set it up right here, smack dab in the middle of the trail next to this picnic table. There is nowhere level and suitable to pitch my tent. <sighs> it is what it is. All right, this day didn't end up how I wanted it to. It started out really, really good. It kinda ended. All right, camp is all set up. I'm right in the middle of the trail and I already had a biker come by, but he didn't care. Um, he completely understood. He knows there's nowhere to camp around here. But he was real familiar with the passage that I just did and uh, the upcoming one, the, the Peach Country Passage. So I got 12 miles of road to get to that passage tomorrow and I had planned on eight and a half miles because I looked at US Highway 176 but I don't want to walk down 176 and from here to Inman. It's four lane. It'd be terrible. So I'm going to have to take the long way, which is almost 12 and a half miles. So that's going to put me behind schedule. It's going to be a big, big day tomorrow. So I don't know if I'm going to be able to get back to my truck tomorrow night or not. It'll be close. Anyway, um, I'm not going to be cooking dinner tonight because I had a huge lunch at Moe's Barbecue um, just a couple hours ago. I have some snacks. Oh, um, Sam, the bartender, at Moe's Barbecue hooked me up with a free dessert. Looking forward to having that tonight. So I do have a little bit of food, along with my uh, sriracha and wasabi peas. Love these things. Usually I have those in the afternoon when I'm craving a salty snack, but those will be good tonight. Uh, what else? Um, yeah, the water, I filter water down here in uh, Lawson's Fork. It's right there. It's not that bad. Doesn't smell the greatest, but it tastes fine. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna turn in early tonight and hit this long road walk tomorrow morning. I, I can't think of anything else. If something else pops up, I'll come back. Otherwise, I'll see you guys in the morning. Good night. Good morning. I'm currently working my way out of USC Upstate. Heading towards Highway 176, and it is breezy today. You can probably hear that on camera and chilly. I think it was warmer throughout the night than it is right now. Anyway, I got about uh, 8.5 miles to Inman in the beginning of the Peach Country Trail. Uh, I debated long and hard on which way to go. Eight and a half miles sounds pretty nice, but it's gonna be busy. It's a four lane highway on that section. Uh, the other direction is kind of routes me through the countryside a little bit. It's much safer roads, much quieter, but it's 12 and a half miles. I don't really want to add four miles of road walking today because my, my feet were beat up last night at the end of that long day of road walking. I'm sure I'm going to feel the same way here in about eight or 10 hours. So I think I'm going to take my chances and take the shorter route on 176. I'm sure we'll find some good grub along the way. Found me some water at the Valero gas station. Just about out to Highway 176. You can see it up ahead here. And it's surprisingly quiet back in here. These housing developments. Yeah, you'd think it'd be much louder with uh, so many highways and freeways just around the corner, but it's fairly quiet. It's been an enjoyable walk so far. All right, here we go. Entering the four lane section of Highway 176. I don't really know what to expect, but I'm committed now. As long as I got this little grass walkway, which it looks like it's been used, quite a bit and I should be fine there is where I was planning on eating breakfast this morning but I originally had thought I was taking the back roads and wasn't gonna have any restaurants along the way so I went ahead and ate my breakfast skillet if I only would have known I could have had a hot cup of coffee and breakfast in a warm waffle house 
currently crossing I-26 interchange. Just three more miles to go to the beginning of the Peach Country Passage. Currently walking into downtown Inman and I'm officially on the Peach Country Passage. So I was expecting to eat lunch here and I reached out to the Palmetto Trail Facebook page and asked for recommendations. And I was recommended to try the Crepe Factory. I looked it up, it looks fabulous. Kind of a farm to fork, uh, small local owner type place. So looking forward to trying out the Crepe Factory here in a few minutes. And then we'll hop onto the, back onto the Peach Country Passage to finish off the final 13 or so more miles. All right, let's go grab some lunch at the Crepe Factory. Well, unfortunately, the crepe house had a wait and they didn't have bar service. Most of their tables were for uh, several people, so I didn't feel like waiting around for one of those. I was just planning on sitting at the bar and ordering, but since no bar service, I decided to move on. And the next option was Holiday Brewing, which is just down the road a quarter mile. And it doesn't open for a half hour. But if I don't grab something while I'm here, I'm gonna be pretty much out of options. I am out of options once I walk out of Inman. So, unfortunately, I have to play the waiting game. But, uh, the holiday brewing sounds pretty good. So I th think it'll be worth the wait. Well, that didn't take long. Just a couple hundred yards down the road. And they open in 15 minutes. Maybe I'll get lucky and they'll let me inside early. All right, I'm all caloried up and ready to tackle these final 13 and a half miles into Landro. Even though it's a sunny day, it is brisk. Uh, I believe it's about 44, 45 degrees. The high today is only 50, but there is a stiff wind coming right into my face. Almost a 20 mile an hour wind. And as you can see, I had to put my puffy on. I am freezing. I even got the gloves out. Right here is Granny's kitchen. That's where I had breakfast last year when I came down to do this section hike with uh, Leonidas. Well, you're a good dog. <laughs> hey, buddy. You can see how stiff the wind is. And it's not a warm wind. Whew. I'm finally off the road for the first time today. Can't believe it. Well, since leaving USC Upstate. And it looks like I'm only off the road for a moment. More asphalt just ahead. Look what is up ahead. The mountains. I've seen them a few times off in the distance, but now it is really looking much closer. And I can only imagine, and I'm guessing the trail is gonna go through there on my next visit to finish up the final 80 to 100 miles from Land Landrum to the end of the Foothills Trail. You know, I'm guessing those are the North Carolina mountains. We're only 15, 20 miles from North Carolina state line. This is very interesting. I'm really curious to what this is. It's a whole group of cottages. I can see four, there might be more than that. And they all look identical. If anybody knows what these are, please let me know in the comments. Let's go take a peek inside one. Oh my. So there's a, I should have a light on so you can see. There's a closet. 
a shelf, one mattress, and there's another closet. So there are two rooms. There's a back door. There's just one more out there. Wow. Yeah, not much to see. I mean, they had power in here. No insulation up above, just a tin roof up there through the drop ceiling. Wow. Man, I wonder what these are for. I was just having some random thoughts. And one of them was about how the frontiersmen made their way through this countryside back in the day. Forging through all of this difficult terrain with no maps, no fast food, no ultralight backpacking gear, and still were able to conquer this land and forge onward to the west. It just blows my mind. <laughs> Here I am complaining about little things that happen on my section hike. Ooh, I'm not even a real through hiker. I'm just a section hiker. Yet these people back in the 16 and 17 and 1800s, probably mostly 1700s, fought and battled Indians, survived on wild game and whatever rations they could carry with no roads and maps. Well, very, probably very few maps of any kind back then. Much respect. Wow. What a view, what a view. Just walking along. Final six or seven miles into Landrum. Look at those peaks. Mountain peaks way off in the distance. That's so cool. We definitely had a lot more ups and downs today than most of the other road walks I've been on on the Palmetto Trail. Well, looky there. Mile eight, which means I'm on the final map for the section hike. Peach Country Passage, map number two. Just six miles to Landrum. And I decided to uh, lay down and take a load off for a few minutes. My feet and knees are starting to feel a little tired. Here we are at Red Hill Orchards. I'm pretty sure they're open. Hoping to get me an apple. All right, I got me an apple. I was gonna get a honey crisp, but I've never tried a pink lady, so I got me a pink lady apple. It was only 76 cents, but I didn't want the change because it's extra weight, so I gave her a buck. Definitely different than a honey crisp, but it's really good. Just hit 20 miles for the day. Got less than four back to my truck at the Landrum Police Department. I'm getting really excited to be done. Less than a half mile to go. This might just be the very last place I'll see on this trip. Okay, right here where I stand is the end of the Peach Country Passage, and I'm now on the Blue Wall Passage. It begins that way at the Equestrian Center, and continues on that way. And that's the way I'm going, because that's where my truck is at the police department. All right, made it back to the Landrum Police Department. And right around the corner here should be my truck in this parking lot up here. There she is, the old Ford diesel. Man, that is a sight for sore eyes. Boy, does it feel good to be back in my truck. This is going to conclude my section hike from the Newberry Passage to the end of the Peach Country Passage. Nine more passages have been completed. Next time down, I'll be picking back up on the Blue Wall Passage and hopefully completing 
the entire Palmetto Trail. I'm currently around mile 400, so I think I have less than 100 miles left. If you are interested in seeing any of my previous section hikes, I will put those down in the description box below. A big thank you to all the trail coordinators and volunteers and everyone who helps maintain the Palmetto Trail for people like me and others who want to hike, backpack, and bike on the trail. It is very well maintained and your, your work does not go unnoticed and is greatly appreciated, so thank you. Well folks, that's a wrap. Time to head back home to Ohio and get back to farming. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. I hope you enjoyed the journey as much as I did. And until next time, I'm Jason Wish, wishing you a great time on your next adventure.